Good afternoon. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining today. I'm Deanna Hertz, and I'm a Health Economic and Market Access Lead for Monarch Bronchoscopy at Ethicon. And I'll be walking you through the 2023 Navigational Bronchoscopy Reimbursement Update. So today I plan to discuss coverage updates for advanced navigation, uh, provide an overview of bronchoscopy codes, updates on hospital outpatient payment, as well as the physician payment for 2022 versus 2023, and then make you aware of our customer coverage and reimbursement resources. So at any point during the presentation you have a question, please feel free to submit the question by using the Q&A button on the bottom of your screen. Um, everyone should be able to see the question submitted and I'll also provide an email if you'd like to just submit the questions directly to our, our team. Um, we should have plenty of time for questions at the end. This is a short presentation. However, if we don't get to your questions, we will follow up with a response afterwards. Additionally, um, the webinar is being recorded. So if you have colleagues that were unable to attend, a recording will be made available. Okay, this presentation will address bronchoscopy coding, which applies to our Monarch platform. Monarch is indicated for bronchoscopy visualization of and access to patient airways for diagnostic and therapeutic procedures. So please note the safety information on this slide. Also note that this presentation is for informational purposes only and does not represent any promise or guarantee by J&J. &J. You should consult your payer organization on coverage and appropriate coding. Um, this information is not intended to recommend coding or make any promises of increased reimbursement. So coverage updates. So I'm happy to inform you um, of a recent expansion coverage for CPT code 31627, Advanced Navigation. So this is the code that's used for the Monarch platform. Until recently, both Aetna and Anthem had non-coverage policy for navigational bronchoscopy. However, in September of 2022, Aetna re reversed their non-coverage decision and now covers advanced navigation, CPT code 31627, for individuals with peripheral pulmonary lesions requiring diagnosis where the lesion is not accessible by standard bronchoscopy or a transthoracic biopsy approach. And then more recently in January of this year, 2023, Anthem has also updated their non-coverage decision and now provides coverage for 31627 advanced navigation. And this is for individuals for whom non-surgical biopsy is indicated and both transthoracic and conventional bronchoscopy are considered inadequate. Additionally, they include coverage for fiducial marker placement. So you can access the full coverage policies for both Anthem and Aetna online. So while there is broad coverage for advanced navigation, if you do have any payer coverage questions or issues with coverage, I encourage you to reach out to our reimbursement support center. So they're able to provide appeal packets. And then additionally, we have um, cover a coverage tool that provides the coverage policies for private insurance companies. So you can get a good understanding of your individual marketplaces. Um, the contact information was provided in the webinar invite as well. And I'll show it several times throughout the presentation. And you can also follow up, um, follow up with your account manager, or we can follow up with informa the information following the webinar. So to start bronchoscopy codes, just a reminder again that this is for informational purposes only, and the ultimate responsibility for coding lies with the provider of the services, and all procedural codes must be supported by clear documentation within the medical records. And this is a list of CPT codes describing procedures associated with bronchoscopy. Uh, bronchoscopy coding is determined by which biopsy tool or tools are, that are used during the procedure. So did the physician um, use, use a wash, 31622, a brush, 31623, a lavage, 31624, transbronchial forcep or lung biopsy, 31628, a needle biopsy, 31629. Um, you would document all the codes based on the tools used. Also note that biopsy um, with the forceps has an endobronchial biopsy 31625, as well as a transbronchial forceps 31628. Um, you also need to know whether or not navigation was used to reach the nodule. So for example, 31627 would indicate navigation used Monarch platform, as well as was radial EBUS used for determining the location of the nodule, 31654 radial EBUS. Um, additionally, there's a code for fiducial marker and dyes, which is 31626, as well as code for EBIS nodule staging. So these codes are based on how many nodes are being biopsied. So one or two nodes, 
31652, three or more nodes, 31653. Um, also included on this slide are the APC codes for hospital outpatient payment in the far right column. So the bronchoscopy codes align to airway endoscopy APC codes, 5153, 5154, and 5155. Um, you can see transbronchial biopsies aligned to 5154, um, as, as does the EBIS nodal stage, staging 5154, and then the fiducial markers is 5155. Um, you can also note, you may also note that there's plus signs. Those would indicate add-on codes. So these are codes that um, are reported with another primary code. They're not reported on their own, thus they do not align to. APC codes. So for example, 31627 advanced navigation, which is an add-on code, is frequently reported with 31628 transbronchial biopsy or 31629 transbronchial uh, needle aspiration, which both align to 5154. So this is provided as a broad overview of the codes. Later we'll provide some coding examples. Uh, hospital outpatient reimbursement 2022 versus 2023. So as I noted, transbronchial biopsy procedures typically fall into either APC code 5154 or 5155. CMS national average reimbursement for APC 5154 is a level four airway endoscopy, and it increased by 5.4% in 2023 to $3,343. While APC 5155 level five airway endoscopy increased by 4% in 2023 to $6,187. And these are higher increases than we saw last year, which were just above 2%. And complexity adjustment adjustments. Um, CMS provides increased payment for a certain combination of codes known as a complexity adjustment. So CMS applies a complexity adjustment when the combination of codes meet both a ut utilization and a cost threshold. And this would apply to the hospital outpatient setting. It's not applicable to physician payment. So when a complexity adjustment is applied, CMS will assign the two procedural codes to the next highest paying APC code. So continuing in 2023, we had 31653, which is EBA staging of three or more nodules. When that code is combined with 31628, transbronchial biopsy, or 31629, transbronchial needle biopsy, their complexity adjusted to 5155. Um, new in 2023, 31629, which is the transbronchial needle biopsy, plus the 31652, which is EBA staging of one or two nodules, also receives the complexity adjustment. So in prior years, it was you had a requirement of three or more nodules to be staged, um, to be biopsied. That, that's not number of biopsies, but number of nodules to that are biopsied. This year, the 31629, the needle aspiration, along with one or two um, nodules biopsied, will receive the complexity adjustment. Also new for this year is the needle biopsy plus the forcep biopsy, transbronchial. Um, that will be complexity adjusted to APC code 5155. So you can note the difference in the last code set is there's no EBIS, no need for EBIS staging. So the other codes all have EBIS staging. The last one is a transbronchial needle biopsy plus a transbronchial forcep biopsy receives the complexity adjustment. In addition to the complexity adjustments for 5155, there are combinations of codes that result in a complexity adjustment to 5154. So a WASH, a lavage, an endobronchial biopsy, um, all aligned to 5153. When they're performed with advanced navigation, 31627, this results in a complexity adjustment to 5154. So it's important to note that every year, these codes are reevaluated and must continue to meet the utilization and cost threshold in order to receive a complexity adjustment. And additionally, there's a lag in the data. So 2023 complexity adjustments were based on 2021 claims data. So I'd like to walk through some scenarios with you. Um, the first one's a monarch biopsy procedure. And this is where a monarch is used to navigate to the target lesion. And once there, 
a radial EBIS is advanced through the working channel of the monarch to confirm the location of the target lesion relative to the scope. Then the REBIS is removed and a needle biopsy and a four bi forcep biopsy is performed. So 31627 indicates that monarch was used. 31654 indicates radial EBIS was used. 31629 is the needle aspiration, and 31628 is the transbronchial biopsy. So in 2022, the hospital, um, the hospital would receive Medicare national average reimbursement, APC code 5154, or $3,164. And this year, the same procedural codes trigger complexity adjustment. So when you have the 31629 plus the 28, they are reimbursed at the 5155 or $6,187. That's the Medicare national average reimbursement. Um, for a second scenario, we have um, a monarch biopsy procedure again, where monarchs used to navigate to the peripheral lesion. Then a radial EBIS is inserted through the monarch working channel to confirm the location of the target lesion relative to the scope. And then the radial EBIS is removed. Then a needle biopsy is taken and a lavage is performed. And then the monarch scope is removed and a linear EBA scope is used to stage the nodules. So in this case, one or two nodules are biopsied. Um, and note that again, this is the number of biopsies, it's, sorry, it's not the number of biopsies, but the number of nodes that are biopsied. So these are two separate procedures performed in the same episode of care. So there's the peripheral lesion biopsy with Monarch and a staging of the lymph nodes with linear EBIS. And I emphasize this because when co when we're coding sometimes, um, understandably, there is confusion between radial EBIS, which is used to confirm location of the target lesion, and linear EBIS, which is used to stage the lymph nodes. So in this example, 31627 indicates Monarch was used. 31654 indicates radial EBIS was used. 29 is the needle aspiration. 31624 is lavage. And 31652 indicates staging of one or two nodal stations. So in 2022, the hospital Medicare national average reimbursement was APC 5154 or $3,164. And this year, the same procedural codes trigger complexity adjustment. So it's the 31629, which is the needle, plus 31652, which is one or two nodules um, that are um, staged, and they are reimbursed at 5155 or $6,187. Okay, so the physician reimbursement 2022 versus 2023. So this is the same list of CPT codes we walked through earlier. However, um, we can see that here the total RBUs as well as the physician national adjusted me Medicare payment for each code. Um, so the physician conversion factor went from $34.61 in 2022 to $33.89 in 2023. So the conversion factor is then multiplied, multiplied by the total RBUs to arrive at the physician payment. So you can see the physician reimbursement is slightly lower for 22 versus, or for 23 versus 22 across all the codes due to the reduction in the conversion factor from $34.61 to $33.89. And then specifically for uh, Monarch 31627, the reimbursement went from 9759 to 9488. And then here are the linear EBIS and radial EBIS codes. Again, the physician re re reimbursement is slightly reduced due to the conversion factor. Okay, and so these are the same examples we saw for the outpatient procedures, hospital outpatient, now uh, presented with physician payment. <clears throat> so again, scenario one, this is a Monarch biopsy procedure. Monarchs used to navigate to the target lesion. And then once they're there, they insert the radial EBIS um, through the Monarch working channel to confirm the location of the target lesion. And then the radial EBIS is removed and then a needle biopsy and forcep, forcep biopsy is performed. <clears throat> so 31627 indicates Monarch was used. 31654 indicates radial EBIS was used. 31629 needle aspiration, and then 228 the lung transbronchial lung bi biopsy. So the physicians paid for each procedural code reported with a multiple procedural endoscopy adjustment applied. Um, so when multiple procedures are, report, are reported during a single encounter by the physician, payers will pay the highest procedure and discount the subsequent procedures to avoid duplicate payment 
for the same um, portions of the physician work. However, this adjustment does not apply to add-on codes. So for example, for this example, the total procedural Medicare average national reimbursement was $398 in 22 and is now $378. And then scenario two, which is again, a monarch biopsy procedure where monarchs navigated to the peripheral lesions. Um, then a radial EBS is inserted through the monarch working channel to confirm the location of the target nodule. Um, the radial EBS is removed and then both a needle bot seen a lavage are performed. The monarch scope is removed and a linear EBS scope is inserted um, and used to stage, in this case, one or two nodules. <clears throat> Again, two separate procedures. One is the peripheral lesion biopsy, and the other one is the lymph node staging using linear EBIS. So 31627 indicates Monarch was used, 31654, radial EBIS, 31629, a needle aspiration, 31624 is a lavage, 31652 indicates staging of one or two nodal stations. So again, the physicians pay for each procedural code submitted with a multiple, multiple procedural endoscopy adjustment applied. And as this example shows, the total procedural Medicare average reimbursement for the procedure is $446 in 2022 and is now approximately 420, 20, yeah, 446 versus $426 in 2023. So now I would just like everyone to be aware of coverage, coding, and reimbursement resources that you have available to you. So as mentioned earlier, we do have a reimbursement support services that's available Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern time. You can contact them via, via email or by phone. Um, when you do, you will reach a certified coder trained on bronchoscopy coding, and they can assist you with physician coding, hospital coding, as well as payer coverage questions and any denials you might, might be experiencing. So that's at the Con Reimbursement Support at itsjnj.com. And again, we'll provide all of this information following the webinar. You can get it from your account manager and it was on the invite to the webinar. So um, we also have reimbursement guides that provide the list of relevant bronchoscopy codes we, we walked through today, as well as inpatient coding and, re and reimbursement on the inpatient side. Um, there's a, a coding scenarios guide that provides several uh, different examples beyond the two we walked through today. Um, both the reimbursement support services, as well as your Monarch account manager can provide you with these reimbursement guides, which also include the reimbursement support services contact information. And then finally, um, as mentioned earlier, if you have any payer coverage issues, uh, please, con please contact our reimbursement support. Uh, they can provide you with a payer appeal letter for three, uh, 31627. It includes a cover letter explaining the clinical need for advanced navigation, as well as a summary of evidence supporting it. And then we also have an appeal letter for pre-procedural CT scans, uh, which explains the clinical need for a CT, CT scan prior to the procedure. Looks like we have nine minutes left, so I'll ask my colleague Scott if there's any questions that have been submitted. They, they, there was three, but they have all been answered. Oh, that was efficient. <laughs> okay, great. Um, I'll give you guys a minute if you guys, if there is any questions, feel free to submit it here or please note, you can submit more detailed questions if you'd like in the Ethicon reimbursement support email.